hear, because you know this already, um, both speech language pathologists and professionals in the field of, of applied behavior analysis provide support to individuals with autism spectrum disorder of various sorts. And um, these are two professions that really ought to work together pretty collaboratively. Uh, there's not a whole lot of reason for people in the two professional areas not to, but, um, but failure to collaborate effectively is unfortunately uh, not a small problem and um, not a BC problem. Um, at the uh, conference of the Association for Behavior Analysis International this last May, there were um, there were several sessions on SLP ABA collaboration, and as our keynote speaker will tell you, um, this is certainly not um, not a problem confined to British Columbia and Canada. She's from Ontario and may tell you a bit of the Ontario story around this as well. So this is it's not just a local issue. Um, clearly, it's an issue that we need to deal with, though, because it's unacceptable for. Uh, two groups of people, both who have very meaningful skills to offer kids with autism and their families to not be working together as well as they might. So there's a real need um, for mutual collaboration to, to, um, to uh, facilitate interactions that are positive and production, productive and, um, and respectful. And that's kind of where the circa comes in. Um, the Center for Interdisciplinary Research and Collaboration in Autism at UBC was established in 2009, and its mission explicitly is to support research and professional capacity building efforts that will improve the lives of individuals with autism spectrum disorders, their families, and the communities in which they live. And the CERC is supported by a number of affiliates from local um, uh, post-secondary uh, institutions, uh, government agencies, um, and so forth, also an advisory board and a steering committee. Um, and so the, the issue of um, difficulty coll with collaboration between SLPs and people in the professionals in the area of applied behavior analysis came to the attention of those of us who are in the circa, and um, it seemed quite reasonable that we do something about it or try to do something about it because one of the circa's mandates is to establish and maintain interdisciplinary collaborative relationships among all of those people there, including community organizations and prof professional resource providers. So this f falls completely within the CIRCA's mandate. So CIRCA, together with two other groups of people, have planned this event for you today. And those other two groups of people, not who are by no by no means incidental, are um, the Autism Working Group of B. Castlepa. Um, and uh, representatives from BC ABBA, the BC Association from applied, for, for Applied Behavior Analysis, um, who came together to plan the event. And so I'd like to introduce these committee members to you. Some of them may not be in the room, but um, I'll come back to that later on. So the circa of folks who have been involved in the planning are Mae Bernhardt, stand up when I you know, and wave. May Bernhardt, Paula Coloso, who is our um, Cecil B. DeMille back there. Today we are videotaping this event. Laura Groh, who's on faculty here at UBC, um, and myself, along with uh, uh, support staff um, from Circa. B. Casapa folks are Mary McKenna. Mary, are you here? No, she's at the desk. Diane Milsom and Karen, Z are you here? No, okay, they're outside. And Karen Zacharias, they're still registering people. People and BC ABBA folks um, have been Sharon Baxter, no, still busy, Miriam Elfert, and oh, there's Miriam and Richard Stock. <laughs> so, this is the group that has, for the last oh gosh, now what six, seven months, been meeting regularly to plan this event. And um, on behalf of all of these folks, I, I, I want to welcome you here today. Um, the goals for today are uh, pretty straightforward. Um, our goal for the event and all of the planning and the presentations that you'll find in the event have been geared toward these goals. Uh, the first is an increase, to increase mutual understanding between SLPs and ABA professionals. In, in BC, these are called behavior consultants, about the scope of practice and the theoretical orientation of each profession 
with regard to supporting individuals with ASD. So two of the presentations today will be basically an orientation to what is speech language pathology, what is applied behavior analysis, how are people in these professions educated, trained, what's their background and experience, what, 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 what are the two professions all about. We, it's, the committee felt really strongly that it's very difficult to collaborate with each other if we don't actually know basic facts about each other's background, so that's the first thing. The second is to increase awareness and provide examples of a range of collaborative SLP ABA models that can result in meaningful outcomes for individuals with autism and their families. So this afternoon um, on this stage will be a panel of uh, teams of SLP ABA professionals who talk about the different models within which they work for toward collaboration and give some, give some examples of how that collaboration has played itself out within the model. I think that will be a really important set of diverse examples about how we can work together productively. Um, and finally, you know, everybody's in the room together and we're hoping that during lunch you won't just sit with other SLPs or other behavior analysts or behavior consultants. You'll sit with somebody who you don't know who is from a profession that you're not in and talk and chat and communicate and write all of that stuff because I think that the, it's the personal um, um, relationships that really move us forward um, in this area of collaboration. So those are the goals. There are also some non-goals, and I want to be very clear about what the non-goals are. The non-goals are these. We are not here to discuss, debate, talk about, suggest, advocate for, whatever, um, the changes, revisions to current MCFD policies related to the Registry for Autism Service Providers, Autism Funding Under Six, Autism Funding Over Six, um, or to make recommendations about future MCFD policies or policy revisions. In other words, this isn't about policy. This isn't about advocacy. This isn't about, you know, we think this should change, that should change. I should acknowledge that Dr. Karen Bopp is in the room. Uh, she's here as a speech language pathologist today. She's not here as an MCFD senior autism consultant. And, um, and I think it's really important that we all understand that the point of this today is to get to know each other better and to appreciate together what we can do for each other and with each other, not to um, deal with you know, policy issues for better or for worse. Speaking of policies, just a little orientation to those of you who aren't aware of the policies. I'm sure that is a minority, but never mind. Let's just make sure. Um, most of you probably know that kids under six, kids and families with autism spectrum disorders under six, have access to up to $22,000 a year. Um, to, and families with that funding can purchase services from behavior consultants, um, from speech language pathologists, from occupational therapists, and from physiotherapists who are on the registry of autism service providers, fondly or not so fondly, known as the RASP. Um, kids, folks over six um, are eligible for up to $6,000 a year to purchase a range of eligible autism intervention services. And of course, that includes all of those professionals and others as well. So the, that's the broad policy in the province right now. And it, you may or may not know, but policies around autism funding are totally different. And I mean totally different, province to province. Um, there's almost no similarity from one province to the next. So this is, this is a BC kind of situation right now. Um, so the two groups of people who are mostly sitting in front of me, and of course, you're, I'm, we're happy that you're here if you're not either an SLP or a, a, a behavior consultant, um, although that's clearly the groups that, who are the focus of the event today. Um, um, SLPs, as you all know, are folks with a master's degree from an accredited university program, and in BC, all SLPs are members of a college, the College of Speech and Hearing Professionals speech and hearing health professionals of BC, which is a regulatory body for folks in that profession. SLPs may also be members of BCASLPA, 
the BC Association for Speech Language Pathologists and Audiologists, which is a chapter of the Canadian organization. But all SLPs have to be mem members of the regulatory body. That's not the same for BCs. The term behavior consultant is a BC term. In other provinces, they're called other things, right? Or they don't exist at all. Right? So this is very much a BC thing. And of course, the term behavior consultant in itself is somewhat problematic in that the word behavior implies to some people that the job of this, these individuals is solely to deal with or to remediate somehow problem behavior. That's the connotation that some people take from that. But in fact, um, that's as you'll hear today, that's certainly not the case. Behavior consultants who work with kids in BC under the age of six have to meet specific educational coursework experience and supervision requirements in order to get on the RASP. Currently there are no educational cor coursework experience or supervision requirements for BCs who work with individuals with autism over the age of six beyond being 19 and having a criminal record check. So. The situation for BCs in the province is quite different than for SLPs. A BC may or may not have a graduate degree, may or may not be a credentialed behavior analyst, and we'll talk more about that credentialing later on, and may or may not be supervised or need to be supervised by someone with more training and experience while they practice. And there's no regulatory body in Canada or in BC for the group of professionals that we know as behavior consultants. BCBAs, board certified behavior analysts, and BCABAs, board certified assistant behavior analysts, are bound by a set of guidelines for professional conduct for their um, organization, the Behavior Analyst Certification Board, but not all BCs are one of the, fall into one of those two groups. So it gets quite confusing when it comes to the background experience, credentialing, and so forth of behavior consultants. And again, that's not just a BC issue. This is, there's a lot of kind of ambiguity around this um, across Canada.